When you've got type 1 diabetes, your body doesn't produce insulin, so you've got to take it yourself by injections or a pump. Insulin works to lower glucose in the blood after eating carb-containing foods, which is why you have to match the amount of insulin you take to the amount of carbs you're eating. That's where carb counting comes in. There are two different ways to count carbohydrates, in grams or as carbohydrate portions. One CP usually equals 10 grams of carbohydrate. The tricky thing is, insulin to carbohydrate ratios vary from person to person, so you'll have to have your own personal ratio depending on your age, weight, activity levels and how sensitive to insulin you are. That's why it's important to work with your healthcare team to find a way that would work best for you. Basically, if you know how many grams of carbs are in a meal and your insulin to carb ratio, then you can work out the number of units of bolus insulin you need to take. If you're planning to eat 70 grams of carbohydrate in your lunch and your insulin to carbohydrate ratio is 1 unit of bolus insulin for every 10 grams of carbohydrate, you'll need to take about 7 units of bolus insulin. Oh, and don't forget about the different types of carbs as well. They're absorbed by the body differently. Remember the fast, medium and slow release rates we spoke about before? Yeah, those. As the name suggests, slow acting carbs are absorbed slowly, so they might not need to be matched with insulin unless eaten in larger quantities. What matters most is monitoring your blood glucose levels to see what effects these foods have on you. It's all about trial and error, so figure out what works best for you.